One thing that makes diving popular is that you can enjoy it in so many different environments, each with characteristics that make it special. Besides coral reefs and temperate ocean, diving's popular in lakes, reservoirs, springs, flooded quarries, rivers, and human-made dive sites. In all of them, six environmental conditions affect you as a diver, though how and the extent depend on the environment. In most environments, temperature varies seasonally, but water also tends to form temperature layers, getting colder as you go deeper. The depth at which you find colder water depends on the environment, season, and water motion. What's important is to wear exposure protection based on your planned depth. Visibility can range from just a meter or a few feet to more than 30 meters or 100 feet. It's usually defined as how far you can recognize a diver horizontally. Like a dust storm in air, lots of particles in the water reduce the visibility. Water movement, weather, plankton, and the bottom composition can all contribute to suspended particles and lower visibility. Lower visibility doesn't necessarily mean a poor dive. What you see is more important than how far, but lower visibility can make it harder to stay with buddies, so stay close, take your time, and watch each other. Navigation usually requires more attention, and it's easier to get disoriented while descending and ascending. As you've learned, it's easiest to descend and ascend along the bottom or a line, and this is especially true in lower visibility. But you can use your dive computer to watch your depth if you don't have a reference. If the visibility is so poor that you wouldn't have fun, it's usually best to not make the dive or end it if you've already started. Clear water can cause disorientation too. Again, a reference helps. You can also get too far from your buddy even though you can see each other. Remember to stay close. The two types of water movement that affect you as a diver are waves and current. We'll look at how waves affect diving later in this section. Currents affect diving because you can't swim against any but a very weak one so you need to use the appropriate techniques. Because they're often strongest at the surface and weakest near the bottom, plan a dive in a current so you avoid long surface swims. Begin your dive swimming into a mild current. That way, when you turn the dive, the current helps carry you toward your exit point rather than pushing you away from it. Especially on the surface, don't swim against anything but a very weak current. Doing so can exhaust you. Swim across the current to reach shore, to reach a line trailed behind the dive boat for this purpose, or to get out of the current, depending upon the situation. When boat diving, if you can't get to the boat due to a current, remain calm, stay with your buddy, inflate your BCD, and use your signaling devices to get the boat to pick you up. Drift diving helps you deal with currents by letting you float with them. It's an exhilarating way to dive that's popular where strong oceanic currents prevail. You can learn the techniques in the Paddy Drift Diver course. The bottom composition may be silt or mud, sand, rock, coral, or vegetation, with more than one common at most dive sites. Regardless of type, avoid bottom contact as much as possible so you don't stir it up and reduce the visibility to help avoid cuts and stings, and so you don't damage aquatic life. Stay neutrally buoyant with your gear streamlined well above the bottom. If you must contact the bottom, choose a place without sensitive aquatic life and hazards and settle onto it gently, ideally with little more than fin tip contact. When you're close to the bottom, watch where you put your hands and feet. When wading in or out during a shore dive, some bottom contact is unavoidable. If necessary where you're diving, wear wetsuit boots to reduce the risk of cuts from rocks or stings from stepping on aquatic life. Wade just deep enough to start swimming. Sunlight affects how much light you have underwater, but it can also cause sunburn, perhaps the most common injury divers get. But it's easy to avoid. Use sunscreen and stay in the shade when you can. 
Cover up with clothing and remember that you can still burn when it's overcast. Repeated long-term exposure to bright sunlight can damage your eyes, so protect them with good quality sunglasses. There's great diving in both fresh water and salt water. Your skills apply to both, but a few differences generally apply. Fresh water is less dense and you don't need as much weight, so check proper weighting when going from salt to fresh water or vice versa. Marine environments tend to have more aquatic life and more water motion, waves, currents, and tides. Freshwater environments are more likely to have bottoms that stir up easily and have distinct cold water layers as you go deeper within the recreational depth range. As a diver, you develop the ability to assess dive conditions. You learn to do this from your instructor, other divers, and experience so that you can assess dive conditions based on the weather, season, water motion, how the water looks, reports online or from other divers, and dives you've made at similar sites. Your assessment includes deciding whether or not to dive. If you have a concern, get more information about how to handle it if you can. If you can't address the issue, then go elsewhere or dive another day. Remember that, ultimately, you decide to dive. You are responsible for your own safety, so only you can make the final decision to dive. As discussed in Section 1, an environmental orientation helps you learn to address what's unique to an environment. You learn to assess conditions and to eliminate potential concerns. Orientations improve your safety, but they also make your diving more interesting, rewarding, and enjoyable. Every diver has limits. Whether you're new or very experienced, dive within your limits. This means you don't exceed your training and your experience limits. It also means you stay within your comfort limits. This is important because data suggests that failure to dive within personal limits contributes to incidents and accidents. It does this because some forms of diving may have hazards that may not be obvious. It takes training to recognize and avoid them. It can cause false security. Sometimes, if nothing goes wrong, a diver exceeds limits, like entering some wrecks without proper training or gear and gets away with it. Unfortunately, this encourages doing it again. When a problem arises, though, the diver is completely unprepared to deal with it. Anxiety can cause divers to neglect potential problems. This happens when divers know they've exceeded their limits and focus on that so much it distracts them from other concerns. Expand your limits by continuing your education and gradually gaining experience. Don't let peer pressure influence you to dive beyond your limits or comfort. Suggest a more conservative dive or dive with another buddy who will dive within your limits. This is not only the better choice for safety, but you'll enjoy yourself more because you can dive with confidence instead of worry. The unique life you see underwater is one of diving's special appeals. It may be your main reason for diving. Most aquatic organisms are fascinating, beautiful, and harmless. As a diver, your interactions can be passive or active. Generally, interact passively, which means leaving aquatic life undisturbed. Swim slowly and smoothly, sensitive to the underwater world around you. The less you disturb, the more you see. Active interactions are those that directly affect aquatic organisms. Some, like touching, moving, or frightening them, are harmful and should be avoided. Some active interactions are reasonable, but more may be harmful even when that's not what you intend. So keep your interactions passive. Most animals you see are harmless, but a few can injure you. Broadly, we can group these as those that can sting and or puncture and those that can bite. Those that can sting or puncture include jellyfish, fire coral and their relatives, spined fish like lionfish and scorpionfish, stingrays, sea urchins, and cone shells. 
Those that bite include moray eels, sharks, barracuda, octopuses, and lobsters, and crab. Most aquatic life injuries result from a diver being careless and provoking a defense reaction. You can greatly reduce the risk of aquatic life injuries by treating all organisms with respect. Stay well off the bottom, wear an exposure suit and gloves if allowed in the area, and watch where you put your hands and feet. Don't touch aquatic animals, particularly those you don't recognize. If you see a potentially aggressive animal, like a large shark, remain still and calm, on or near the bottom. Don't swim toward it, but keep an eye on it. Chances are it's just passing through. But if it appears aggressive or too curious for your comfort, calmly swim to your exit on the bottom and leave the water. Most aquatic life injuries are mild, but can range from annoying to life-threatening. In all cases, give priority to breathing, providing CPR, and controlling severe bleeding as needed. Provide first aid and seek emergency medical care for clearly serious injuries, severe reactions, or those that don't respond to treatment. You learn more about these types of emergencies in the Patty Rescue Diver and Emergency First Response Primary and Secondary Care courses. When it comes to injuries by aquatic life, you normally think of animals, but kelp and other vegetation can have some hazard potential. The primary one is entanglement, so keep your kit streamlined and stay out of dense growth areas. If you get snagged, back up, but don't turn. That tends to make things worse by wrapping it around you. Get your buddy to help free you if necessary.